Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first ever show called What's the show called? Do we do we know what it's called? F. You said, I think it's F off the press. That's what we're going with, and why? Because today is big news. Yes. But didn't you say it? Didn't you say fresh off the press? And I was like, F off. It's like, hey, man, is this a bit provocative? What's going on there? Well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we're going for. F off the press, actually. Okay. I mean, can we never okay. fuck the ESL? I mean, we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. It's kind of <laughs> just, just to give everyone a little bit of insight. Also, congratulations to Celo. This is officially his 50th cap for Goal Lounge TV. So congrats, Celo. Well done. Well done. Um, but just to give some insight of what the show is about, moving forward, what if the if off the press, we've got to get used to this. This isn't rolling off the tongue. I've got to speak to my admin person. What the show is going to cover in the future is all the breaking news that comes, comes up, and that's what we're going to be discussing. Today, we've got an expert in. We've got Mr. Nglovo coming all the way from Cash and Sport and um, you can give you introduction here, man. Tell us, tell us why you're on the show today. Hey, gents, how are you guys doing? Um, I don't know why I'm actually on the show. You guys asked me to come on. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, so so um, I'm a I'm a sports business researcher. Um, I run a, a website called Cash and Sport. Um, I just literally started a podcast a couple of weeks ago, um, but I basically look at the business side of sports um and not just only football i look at what it, what the business models are the reasons why the the money is the way it is um i currently run a series called know your owner on um on twitter which is every friday where i look at who owns a club in the psl or the nft which which i'm doing now did the whole psl last year and um yeah where their money comes from how they you know how they balance their books um, and yeah, that's generally what I do. Um, I kind of look at sports business. That's why the website is called Cash and Sport. It's the merger between the two. I yeah. think it's no perfect time no to be on the show, given the, 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 the cash and sport that might be flowing with the, this new proposed ESL in place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, Cla 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 uh, I, I think I think I want to say something before 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 we go into the, the deeper matters. I think I think just to dispel any 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 notions that Man United is the driving force behind this. Um, <laughs> yes, we are one of the founding clubs, but Liverpool is also involved. So me and Liverpool are in bed together, and that's 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 that 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 that. that that you know, I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. I think that's probably the most embarrassing <laughs> thing to come out of all of this is the fact that they are in bed together. I mean, if you go onto the Liverpool website, the announcement that was made today is word for batem the same statement that came from the United State. They actually use the words from the United on the Liverpool yeah. website. So yeah. for me, I mean, I'm just like it makes you want to throw up a little bit. But I mean, let's let's talk about the the big elephant in the room, the European Super League, gentlemen. Yeah. I mean. This is arguably within the last 24 hours the biggest football news that has come out. Um, obviously, the irony behind all of this is how shocked all the fans are, but this has been a rhetoric that's been pushed for at least the last two to three years and it's been in the background and no one said anything. I mean, it's, it's not that it's been quiet, but everyone's been like, oh, it's not going to happen, it's going to happen. Well, the, the announcement's there. Some, some memorand memorandums have been set out and um, there has been agreements and it seems like it's going to happen. Uh, in Glovo, Mr. Ndovo. Yeah. I, only guys, yeah. I'm not saying his first name because I've been getting a lot of heat here <laughs> not being, being well, able to pronounce call me, it correctly. Call me Nabs. Call me Nabs. I used to have a Twitter handle called Turkish Nabs before it became too hard to to tell people what Turkish Nabs was about. Just call me Nabs. <laughs> Other people in my day to day life call me Nabs. It's easier. Okay. All right. Nabs. Cool. Um, yeah. You, you want to give a bit of a background as to what this European Super League entails? Um, yeah, so it's ostensibly what it is, is that it's a, um, you, you have currently 12 member teams, right, who are founding members. Um, it's six clubs from England, um, and then two each from, from the rest of the other team, uh, from the rest of the other big six, um, well, big five leagues. So you've got two teams from Italy, which is Juventus and Milan. Um, and then you've got two teams from Spain, uh, Madrid and Barca. And then you've got um, two te or six teams from England, <laughs> which is a whole lot. Um, and these teams basically put together uh, with the hope that two teams from Germany would join, uh, which is Dortmund and Bayern. And then one, one other team would join. So it would make 15 teams, right, as, as the core, members, core membership. 
Those 15 yeah. teams could not be relegated from a super league, which is the U- yeah. uh, European Super League. And then what they would do is that they would take another five teams every year would then, I don't even know if you can really call it a qualifier, but the, the, the top ranked team in each of those other, of, of the five leagues would make up uh, uh, a 20 league team or a 20 team league which would then compete in a tournament where you have um, you have 10 teams on each side of the draw. They come together into a tournament and they play each other home and away. And they, and they, they, whatever, whatever they would call it, the super league champion of champions. I don't know what they, what they're going to decide to call it, but essentially long and the short, that's how it is. Financially speaking, there's a lot more money, um, you know, behind it. It's being financed by J.P. Morgan and Chase, which, for some who may not know, it's the biggest institutional bank in the world. Um, they, in terms of just global money, they are massive, and they're talking big numbers. Um, I mean, just from the outset, they're talking about 3.5 billion uh, pounds, um, which would be split amongst these 15 teams. Yes. Um, which is which is ridiculous money already on its own because UEFA's entire budget for uh, for European competition is only three billion pounds, and that's Europe, that's the Champions League, Europa League, yeah. Yeah. the Youth League. You know, that's all of the competitions combined is only three yeah. billion, and and we we haven't even started talking about the prize money for this Super League. Um, so there's there's a lot of money behind it, and essentially that's how the thing would work. Yeah. And uh, just to put that in perspective, guys, each of these teams, like he says, it's 3.6 billion pounds, pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's 300 million pounds per team just for entering. And the the grand prize of Champions League, I think it is, it's 100 million pounds. Just just to give you the the different perspective here. So we we the fans, and I think the, the reason this is an awesome show for us is we're not classified, even though we identify ourselves as diehard Premier League fans, we're not technically classified as the true and true Guys, they're living there in the UK. Le- we are legacy, seeing... they, they, they're calling them the legacy fans, apparently. Legacy fans, satellite yeah. fans, the new emerging market fans, which is kind of what these clubs are targeting. Guys, it's important yeah. to give your, your feedback, your, your sort of input based on what you think about all of this, largely because it's good for the other guys overseas to hear what we're thinking. So, Mosa, we know what Nick's going to say. Nick's, Nick's upheaval. We'll wait for Nick after your opinion, Mosa. Where, where are you at with all of this? Uh, I'm not a fan. Uh, look, I enjoy watching the best teams compete. I enjoy watching them compete at the highest level. I feel that highest level should be attained by their performances on the field and not their performances off the field. And currently, the structures that have been built are poor performances off the field. Yes, it will be exciting to see the ESL pit some of the biggest teams in, I can't even say Europe right now because it's just three countries. So in these three countries, they'll be pitted against each other. It'll be exciting to watch a Man United take on Real Madrid, Barcelona week in, week out. But it'll lose a flair when the quality of the players aren't actually producing the goods on the field every day. And that, for me, it, it, as a fan, as a natural fan, I grew up watching football, watching Champions League, watching World Cups, watching international games with that anticipation to know that guys are taking every single game that they encounter very, very seriously and that there's something at stake. The format of this uh, ESL scares me. Uh, 15 teams, which are the core members, which will never lose their space in this league. I think it's, 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 it's not fair for a lot of other teams which have been doing a lot better over the current years. I mean, some of the teams that are included in there are the likes of Tottenham and Arsenal. Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Levy. <laughs> Daniel yeah. Levy is always in the conversation somehow. But anyway, as yeah, you were more I find it crazy because like these 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 teams they, they do very well in their own right, but they're not warranted to belong in a, a Champions League stature. And now we're taking the Champions League and moving it to another place and calling it the Super League, which I don't I'm not excited about at all. I'm not a fan of it and I want it to die. Die a quick death actually if, if possible. I love the format of seeing players work their way up the ranks, work their positions up the ranks, teams looking the part, teams being tested out for their performances to actually take the top prize in a in a in a in a calendar year. And this is gonna erode that that value for me as a as a fan. So yeah, man, 
uh, not excited at all about it. Um, I understand the, 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 the rights that the, these, these teams will gain privilege to. I understand the model uh, in a sense. I still have a few questions about the model where they actually keep the, the actual value of the, the league going by having these rights continually uh, playing out. But I don't like what it will do for the, the, the majority of European football and where to leave teams like Leicester, teams that like West Ham. West Ham is, is a great team and a great example. You know, they have a good chance to fight for a Champions League spot. And now we're taking that spot away and saying, no, they don't ever warrant themselves to be in that top position, which is something I really detest and I'm not really a fan of at this point in time. Why don't we then just get yeah. a, a World Cup or a regional tournament where we've kind of selected the top 10 teams and let them just go for it? I don't think that's the best uh, approach that we could follow to actually get the top quality to club it. You know, you know, you know, with 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 with, with what Musa has said, I think, I think, you know, um, a lot of people obviously have discussed that that's that's the majority view that that that's being held um, on social media and and all over the world. Um, I just want to also look at the other side of things as well in terms of um, UEFA and FIFA. You know, UEFA and FIFA are controlling football, right? These are the these are the two um, yeah. governing bodies. Uh, obviously, UEFA falls under FIFA. FIFA has been corrupt. You know, it's been happening all over, um, you know, Sepp Blatter days, uh, even before Sepp Blatter days, you know. Um, a World Cup is going to Qatar. You know, guys, Qatar's got no football heritage. You know, um, other countries exactly. that were bidding for other countries that were bidding for the World Cup um, along mm-hmm. uh, against Qatar were actually footballing nations where they should have been the ones that uh, won the won the bid. And obviously, Qatar just basically bought bought the whole um, rights um, for the World Cup. And then now PSG as well. PSG is not gonna um, enter the Super League uh, because the Qatar Investment Group owns PSG, which is basically the sovereign wealth fund of Qatar. Um, they don't want to mess up the, their chances of the World Cup. So I just feel that, you know, the clubs want to take back the power. You know, they feel yeah. that they are they are basically powerless in all in, 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 in football right now in terms of the value that they generate. You know, we've got these global brands. Um, they're not deriving the income um, that they feel that they should be getting from, from, from Champions League. Uh, but then again, I think there's a way that you can actually do it rather than, um, you know, in this manner that they want to do it. Because, you know, I still f- uh, feel very strongly about merit-based um, 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 football. You know what I mean? Because in this instance, it's the American sports model. You know, the American sports model, no one gets relegated, you know. All these owners, mm-hmm. when they came to England, they're like, I don't understand. So a big team can get relegated, you know, whereas the clubs, that the teams that they own, the franchises that they own in the US, you know, the Red, the Red Sox, um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, those teams cannot get relegated from from the NFL and 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 the MLB, you know, and and for them it's yeah. a quite a foreign it's a foreign concept, and that's how that's how they kind of um, make so much money, or that's how the value of the companies, the businesses that they've bought, the the the, the franchises have, has grown. You know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was worth um, 192 million when when Joel Glazer bought it. Now it's worth about two or three billion dollars. You know. Um, so they want to do that with, with 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 European sports, and I think they, you know, it's 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 all good and well to to get more money, but there's right ways to do it. So, there's right. Yeah. Ways so, Celos, you're painting the, the 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 picture in terms of football traditionally is a sport that's created for the community for the people. So the altruistic sort of but approach for football is it for the good of football. Sorry, it's What's not that? created for. It's created by the community. It's not created for the community. It's, by, it's a product right, of- by the community, right. So that, that's a significant point. But now when we're looking at this, this is moving into the business realm. Football clubs have now, and it's not, it's not a secret, football clubs have become a business. And you've got foreign investment from the Americans. Why? They're moving from the States into Europe because it's a lucrative market. And largely because of the fact when we're looking to the US, like you've said, Celo, it's a franchise sort of owned business. The league owns it. They buy the franchise and that's how it works. In Europe, they can own the clubs outright. And this is what's pretty much forked this whole sort of thing where they're going, well, why are we playing by these rules when we can create our own rules? And Nabs, from your perspective, in terms of a business context, where does this leave football and where does this leave the growth of football? Because this, this has been a trajectory that somewhat this last season has been hit, hidden rather by the, the COVID sort of circumstance saying, oh, they don't have money. But this has been in, in the background for, for a while now. Well, you know what? My personal opinion on this issue and um, 
you know, I, I got a lot of attacks on, on, on this issue earlier today. But anyway, my personal opinion on this issue is that football needs to, needs to grow up. Uh, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. So the business model of football basically saw almost all of, almost the, the entire second half of the Premier League table, the entire second half of the La Liga table, most football clubs financially suffering. Right. Yes. Um, yes. Not able exactly. to not able to survive. Okay. Um, and I feel that um, this is a is a watershed moment that has been coming for a long time. Let's look at other global sports that that have you know that have transitioned into global sports you know type of franchise models, where rugby, for instance, used to have the Super Fifteen and so on and so on. They moved on because they realized that. You know, you need bigger revenues. You need to be able to, to, to take care of the value creators, which is the bigger teams. And unfortunately, let's, let's face facts. You have big teams who create this value. Most of the fans create them, um, you know, follow them. And most of these fans understand that, you know, these guys are the ones, these guys and these players are the ones that create, they are the product, right? The exactly. fans support the teams. Great. I don't dispute that. I'm a purist football fan. I disagree with the exclusivity model where teams can't be relegated from this league. But also at the same time, you can't ignore the fact that financially speaking, football as it is right now doesn't make sense for the value creators, number one, and then two, in terms of the proposition for the teams underneath who are competing with those value creators and trying to also survive. It, it, it just doesn't make sense as a model. So in my opinion, you need to you need some way somehow to try and find a, a way to generate a lot more income, which is which is what the Super League would do, and then also create a way for other teams to also benefit from from that income. I'm not exactly sure how exactly they'll do that because they haven't spoken to what happens to the lower tier teams that don't get into the Super League, and mm. and how they would benefit and how those you know parachute payments would impact them. But I feel that. Football needs to get to to understand that the world has moved on in terms of global sports, and the money's well, coming. It's going to come to Africa. Can, it's it's going to come. I can I can answer that question for you, um, Nabs. There were uh, a couple of the mm. clubs that were, were mentioned. Uh, my club, Newcastle, for example, had come out and said no other Premier League club other than the six. Um, no club was consulted. Uh, so none of the other mm -hmm. Premier League stakeholders actually knew about this. Obviously, it was yeah. you know widely spoken about for the last couple of years, but no one knew that this statement or memorandum was going to come out today. So what I can mm. wholeheartedly understand from this whole thing is that there won't be any parachute payments. The rich are going to get richer and the poorer clubs are going to pretty much stay where they are or if not suffer from this whole situation. So I do understand from that perspective, from a business model, football does need to progress and, and transcend into a way where more money can be generated. But from a footballing perspective, and as a purist myself, as you said you are, it, it, it mm. just doesn't make sense for uh, the, the most supported sport in the world uh, to have a, a rogue league, if you want to call it that, um, mm. move away from where the clubs actually come from, the cities and the, and the, mm -hmm. the communities that they come from. I just don't see it. And, and I am... I'm absolutely well, livid. I think it's, I, I, I just can't, I can't understand it. I can't. I, I find this, I'm glad, I'm glad we have these contrasting opinions because for somewhat, and this happened by chance. I don't even know Nabs is on the side of the corner, largely because, you know, I was looking and this was Settler's idea, let's get Nabs on. When I started reading this, I was like, this is fantastic because I've been studying this for like the last four years and I've been looking at everything and it's exactly what he says. When we, when we dissect what the Premier League is as a mm. product, the product's assets, biggest assets, are the supposed six top clubs. And unfortunately, Nick, with this time period, Newcastle has fallen behind. And it's just how commercial, how everything's become. So when we're looking at how we break this up, at the end of the day, they do fall behind. Now, from, a, again, a football perspective, why we, our generation as football fans, we identify with clubs symbolically. And when we're looking at brand associations, we look at these sort of things. We look at these sort of things. Why do we, why do we support the club we support? Hard working community. And that's the sort of thing, you know, that's causing the uproar apart from the, 
the sort of non-transparency and the, the lack of communication that's come behind all the things. But at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is these changes were coming regardless. After today's announcement, the change was going to happen. The change was coming. Yeah. Now, whether it was the Super League coming, it was the, the Champions League now also, or the UEFA announcing their sort of rechanging the format proposed for 2024 mod. All this is, it's different franchises, different bureaucracies to get their hands on the money and create different mediums and ways. Now, sure, their yeah. proposal by the end of the day is no different to what these guys are saying. And all they're doing now is taking the autonomy going, well, why must we play by your rules when we can do it ourselves? Our brand equity on itself, by itself, you know, can make more. Sure. And at the end of the day, you know, this is where we might lose the sort of community-based driven sort of thing. But at the end of the day, Gen Z, what they've said, they've come out saying they've done their research and they want to see these games. Now for us, we go, you're diluting, you're saturating the sort of game. What makes Real Madrid versus Liverpool that happened last week so significant is the fact it doesn't happen so often. But the kids mm. playing FIFA, for example, they're doing it week in, week out. They're playing Liverpool, Real Madrid, Barcelona. They're doing this on a consistent basis and they're actually not even watching real football. Now, where does that leave us, I think? Where does that leave... The millennials, where does it leave the older generation? Where does and that's sort of the disgruntled thing. Now, again, football's for the people. I'm just putting this out there because I'm playing devil's advocate, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm curious to get that sort of insight. Like, why obviously, again, the transparency and the lack of communication is a thing here causing the issues, but we know the need for the statement had to come out there. Whether or not this is also a bluff from these six club or these these clubs going. Because one of the breakdowns of communication, might I add, with UEFA was the fact that they wanted more control in the sponsorships and the broadcasting deals and you yeah. weren't giving any leeway. So whether or not yeah. this is a bluff or whether they're going to do something, the timing and the head-to-head the -head was always going to be happening. This is consequential of what's been coming. Well, sorry, Nat, if, now, if you look yeah. at the, um, sorry, if, yeah. if I can just say something quickly, if you look at the, the timing of the statement, they didn't have a choice but to put it out. Because if you remember, UEFA was, was supposed to release their expanded model today, which they did yeah. today. So, if, if these guys had, hadn't said anything and hadn't said, oh, by the way, actually, we disagree with this and we're going to do our own thing, then they would have been lumped in with this and then they would have been revolutionary clubs and said, oh, no, well, we, we, we disagree with it and we don't want to do it. And also another thing is um, if you look at the way that the Champions League is structured right now, what is so different between the Champions League and the Super League? The only difference is the, is the exclusivity in terms of, in terms of teams being, being able to be relegated. You still yeah. already have a, yeah, a that's, secret that's, that's, top top club, whatever, whatever thing. The where seeding, only the best of the best go through. The, seed, the, the seeding that they're talking about. Um, no, but I'll yeah. tell you right now, Man United in, have in, been in, absolutely horseshit for the last ten years since so first awesome. left, and you've been yeah. and you've been excluded outside of the Champions League. For me, you have to earn your right. You have to earn yeah, your right. You can't finish cool. seventh and then automatically like Arsenal are going to finish ninth this season. They, they yes, okay, they they derive a lot of income. And they're worth a lot more money than, say, West Ham, who potentially could mm. get in. But mm. where, how are you going to earn your right? So, so a mm. team can't essentially a team can't dream anymore. If you're not part of the six in England or the twelve in uh, mm. the, the twelve, that you can't dream. You got no chance. Yeah. You might as well just play in your yeah, own no, league. It, it becomes it, a it, farmers it, league, it, it, and then it's done. I do agree with you that it is it, it is similar because. 75% to 90% of the time, those teams are always going to be in the, in the Champions League. Well, they're thereabouts. Um, mm. But um, to, to, to have five we, places, we, five places a year for, for teams, I mean, are you going to suck I'll them out of your it, thumb? Yeah. Well, what's the, what's yeah. the progress? Uh, how are you going to progress through to be, that? Uh, yeah, and then it's going to be about the same factors which drove the, the factors of making decisions about those same 12. It's going to be about the brand loyalty and the brands that they can, the amount of reach that they can bring sure. into the to actually let it grow and sometimes that's not mm. uh as a purist it was nice to see leicester win uh, the english premier league because they actually came with the brand of football which is exciting to watch quality players who they got to sell across europe as well and it was a product which everybody consumed very very well everybody likes that underdog story the only underdogs here in this league are going to be if i can tottenham and uh arsenal and, and we don't milan, know and ac milan and, and ac milan uh, but, but you know, but, no, but but what I want, what I want to also add, right, is that you need to also look at the fact that some of the clubs that are involved are in huge debt. You know, Inter Milan, AC Milan, Juventus, AC Real Madrid, Barcelona, Atletico. Um, the the only clubs that I could say that they, they don't need this really is is Man City and Chelsea. 
You know, those no. two clubs have, have billionaire... So essentially, have, these have, teams need have, it. Have, ...have billionaire owners that just put money into yeah. their clubs. And, and you know what I mean? Whereas the other clubs, they've got American owners, you know, who want to obviously derive the most value out of their teams. Um, and, and yeah. you know, and, and Tottenham also, you know, uh, Penny Pinchers, you know, even though they're the, they are, they are owners, even though they are owner... Um, the guy who's got the most shareholding, he's got, he's quite a, he's a billionaire. But so that means now with all of this, that two hundred fifty million pounds, three hundred million pounds, that's going to add a lot to their bottom line. You know, Real Madrid's building a new stadium; they need the funding. Barcelona's got a one billion, uh, uh billion euro debt, uh, line that they're trying to sort out. You know, they need this money. Uh, Inter Milan have Chinese um, owners who apparently now the team that they own in China that just won the Chinese Super League is shutting down. You know what I mean? So Inter Milan needs this money. AC Milan needs this money. Juventus needs this money as well. You know what I mean? Um, Juventus' share went up by 10% today um, on, the, on the back of this news. You know what I mean? So, they, so all, of the, all of these clubs are broke and they need this money. Yeah. And, yeah, I, and I think what... what Cla- Sorry, Mosa. I think what Claudio had said also does make a little bit of sense. You know, this could be a whole bluffing situation from their perspective. Um to sort of get UEFA to act, but they're still not going to get the money that's being quoted that in the media. Want, yeah. They're not going yeah. to get to 300 million pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, they yeah. might give them a small, small extra portion of the pie, um, but essentially they want to make their own pie. So now my question to you guys is there's been a lot of talk that UEFA want to step in with the, the said FAs, um, the three that we're talking about, and actually mm-hmm. ban these clubs. You know, is yeah. that possible? Um, you know, I thought it was quite cheeky of the clubs to sort of suggest that they can go play in this European Super League, but they still want to play in their Premier League um, yeah. and and or play in their La Liga. Um, yeah. So for me, I thought there was a slight hint, or not a slight, actually a, a large hint of uh, arrogance there, you know, from, from, the, from the clubs thinking, you know, we'll have our cake and we'll eat it. Um, and, and I think well, it's just well, 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 to the league. Yeah. Yeah. When when you say the arrogance, so the arrogance isn't coming from the club specifically. The arrogance that you are claiming, well, I suppose it's not claiming. It is. It's a, it's arrogance because it's the owners making the decision. But at the end of the day, they can make the decision because what happens to the Premier League when these six clubs leave it? What are they gonna yeah. are, now? All of a sudden, we're gonna see Leicester City win weekend. So, are they gonna become I, the next global thing? Are people I, still gonna watch the know, Premier League? No, no, no. But that's the thing, you know. So I had this debate earlier today. The Premier League pretty much can't afford to lose them. Exactly, so, and that's why they got this. You, you know, so they, so they, yeah, they're going to do this. But I mean, I would like to see the Premier League. You know, if the Premier League had to say, "Listen, you expelled for a year," you are telling me the the, the 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 Liverpool fans, the Man United fans, are going to accept that? Do you think they just okay. want to play in the Super League and travel to Barcelona and, and Real Madrid every week? No, we'll Can even I give we'll, you guys we'll, a we'll, theory. Yeah, of of what I think will happen. Right, I think that. I think that these guys have to, if, it, if this happens, which I, which even if it doesn't happen now, I think in the next five years, it will happen anyway. Exactly. But what Same I think exactly. will happen is that, is that they will play in the domestic leagues. And the reason for that is because they generate so much value that those domestic leagues will benefit from them being there in the first place. Um, yeah. And I think that when I asked about parachute payments earlier, it's because I think that they will sacrifice some of their broadcast revenue which they get from the from sky and bt and so on and so on and that will be pushed down into the into the other teams within their league because they get in because they get in more money from the super league yes because you're getting more money from super league so why do you you don't need all the extra money that you're getting from from sky exactly but i'm 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 materially worried about the quality of football that we're going to be introduced to so um, we get excited about watching, as you said, Claude, watching a Liverpool or a Madrid every three years because there's, there's guys who have been watching these fixtures over their entire careers thinking if they get opportunity to play Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions, this is a prime time they have to shine. And mm. there's a whole spectacle around that. There's a whole magic which exists in saying, OK, guys, we're not sure we're going to meet uh, in the Champions League semifinals, quarterfinals, but they're going to be the best in Europe and we have to show. If these guys are going to produce this league, they're going to play Monday or Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. These same teams. And then have commitments with their leagues, which they're trying to do. Eat their cake and, and make their cake and eat it. What, what happens to the quality of the football that they produce? Their players can't run uh, literally two games a day every, every week. 
Uh, it's it's not possible. What happened? Uh, Musa, I, I don't know, man. I think I think you're jumping to things here because logic. Because this is what they're doing now. They're doing. They're playing so much football as it stands. All they're doing here mm. is they're shaking it up. Listen, here's the argument. You've got your FIFA's, your UEFA's. The, these are the guys, and we know how corrupt all these guys are. They're the ones making the decisions. They're the ones getting. And then the clubs. We are the actual. Forget about international football. Forget about all this. The clubs right now. That's where the money's at in football. And when we say clubs, we're talking about these Super 12 clubs or whatever these clubs are. They're the ones bringing in the money. And when we're looking at broadcasting, your Sky, your BT, BBC, and all these other decades, they're all reliant on the product that is these clubs playing. Now, mm. if we're going deeper now, obviously, uh, Dizan have said they, they're not associated to any of this. We look, they're looking for a, a sort of global tech streaming company to back them. Then yeah, they, when you look at a super sport... Yeah, this currently, Gen Z, this is how they're consuming content. The kickoff, for example, well-known show, similar to the one that we're doing, if, uh, the, the leaders in this sort of genre, so to speak. Kids are now watching football while they listen to these guys speak, and they are shaking up the whole broadcasting scenario. So why not be the club at the forefront of this sort of movement and take the destiny into your own hands? If they wanted, they could create their own streaming channels. Now, I understand the competitiveness. At the end of the day, there will be some, and I suppose, Nabs, for you, th this is the question I have. Yeah. One mm. of the biggest issues, obviously, the English are super buttered by all of this, yet they allowed yeah. all the sort of foreigners into their league in the first place. The foreigners mm. that are responsible turning this league into a global league, the best, watch, most watched league in the, in the world, the Premier League. Mm. Now, what happens to the rest of the development of football within England? And I think that that's where the worry is. Now, we're looking at the clubs like Newcastle, yeah. we're looking at other clubs. What happens to that sort of downward spiral? And again, it's all, this is based on what you think is going to happen because you're an expert in studying sort of the trajectory and the trends. But looking yeah. at in terms of, you know, we, we can't really predict the exact outcome, but what happens in sort of the knock-on effect in this? Because they haven't either discussed what's going to happen. And that's also where yeah. this, the yeah. argument's coming well, in. Well, I, I was reading, actually, this is one of the things that I mentioned in my, in my thread about this earlier. I was reading up on this and I thought that um, one of the things that they could probably do is because they said that this Super League isn't only going to be for the men's teams, it's also going to be for the women's teams. And then I thought to myself, but then again, all of these teams have youth, youth team structures. They've got an under 23 team. They've got 28 man squads. What they're probably going to do, in, which, is, I think, which I think would probably be smart, would be to create sub leagues underneath it to have let's say your best of the best under 21 players playing against each other because right now what you end up having is that teams farming out players to all sorts of leagues chelsea with giant squads and farming out players on loan etc etc because they can't get a game right so then create a, a, an, an um a, a under 21 league which is purely under 21 players but is bigger than the main super league so that your best of the best players are always playing week in, week out against the best talent. Because right now you might have a player, you know, Mason Mount was at Derby County because he couldn't get a game at, at the at, at senior level. Um, uh, that would solve that problem to some extent, but I, I'm not entirely sure how you then look at League Two and, you know, um, yeah, yeah problem, it, it would still cause some, somewhat of a problem. Yeah, it would be too few teams to facilitate those, those players. Uh, it would literally be um, 10 or 12 teams, or let's say 20 teams, that facilitate the, mm -hmm. the development of world football. And that's... That's, um, that's scary. That's scary. Yeah, very scary content. Yeah. Uh, given the current example where potentially these these kids will probably have to go through a thousand different teams to figure their way out of the line. There's no clear straight line, but they can compete yeah. at their level mm -hmm. everywhere. And now you, you narrow yeah. it down to 20 teams. Even those kids... They won't get signed up. Messi is an example. He got signed up when he was very young, like 12, 13. And mm. that, that prospect is gone for a lot of players. Um, well, that's already gone, that, Mosa. You're saying that's gone. That's already gone. Largely because of the age now. restrictions and stuff. Yeah, that's gone now. That's not going to happen. Yeah, you can't because you can't, you can't sign. Um, in England, you can't sign um, people under the age of 18 now. So you're yeah, done. So obviously, so that's, so that's why the, those, those academies are going to die. All the academies that you know of right now, Barring the top six that are in this in this program, yeah. they'll die, and that that's my concern. The leagues, imagine kids that so are eight years old. So, yeah, so then the, what's because, the solution? Because, because if, if we if we just say okay, listen, this is not going to happen. Um, you know, you know, this is going to kill football. Keep everything as it is. 
what is the solution down the line? Because if, we, if COVID carries on for another two years or another year, those clubs will die anyway. Yeah. But that's such yeah, a, I mean, um, that's, that's a defeatist and like um, no. a, an approach which I'm not ready to take on at this point in time. Because it's a realist football, approach though. But Musa, Musa because, because, because remember last year, Musa, there was a big thing last year, what is happening, right, in, in England, right, where they were talking about what, what, what they call the EFL. The EFL is the championship and every other club's downwards, right? And then there's a Premier League. So the Premier League and then the EFL. The EFL is da- um, championship down and the Premier League. And then now they were saying that the Premier League wanted to get more money, right? Yeah. And they were and they were willing, right? Um. They, this was this was one of the proposals was they were going to get like for instance like the reserve sites for each team to now go play in the lower leagues. For instance, let's say a League Two. Let's say Man City's reserve team, Man United's reserve team are in League Two, and they can get promoted. They can literally get promoted up until um championship level and stop there, and they can't obviously get into Premier League. Uh, they wanted yeah. to do that now, and they were going to say, okay. Um, we're going to give you guys more money, parachute payments, right, to, so that you guys can, can stay afloat. But then now <laughs> we're going to bring in our reserve teams to play in your leagues as well now. And now it's a cash 22. Now you need the money, right? But they giving you conditions of saying, I'm going to give you guys the money, but my reserve team can now um, play in your, in your lower leagues, like how they do in Spain. Because, you know, in Spain, um, like these, low, these um, second uh, teams mm-hmm. are, playing in, are playing in League 3, for instance, in Spain. And they can come up until League 2, um, in uh, La Liga 2. You know what I mean? They had all of this stuff. And now, obviously, now, what would then happen is that these smaller teams that, that are in the, in the lower trenches, they could get kicked out because, obviously, these squads are strong. You know, these guys, they've got strong teams. You know what I mean? They beat them in, in these cups and stuff like that. So, so it, it's, hap- it's been happening in England as well. Because of yeah. COVID, this whole COVID issue has brought about so much discussions and so much upheaval in the in the way way and uh, the way um, leagues are run. Because now, the money is not flowing to the top. You know, now it has to be equally spread. But then, yeah. actually, guys, we're the ones that actually bring the value. Well, all the all COVID's done is it's brought a spotlight to the situation. It's given the owners of these bigger clubs a reason to do what they're doing at the end of the day. Because, like you said, this was all consequential. This was happening anyway. This farce of the dream of a smaller club winning the Premier League. The fact that Leicester City did it, it was all compound interest in the timing, what had happened. They were doing, making the right decisions, running it as a business with certain decisions, hiring and buying the right sort of players. They won at the right time, and now all of a sudden they compete in the top six. So, yes, we can feel for a club like that. Newcastle were nowhere near in that sort of scenario. So, they were still a long way of okay, achieving Okay, well, that. let me ask you a question. Why Why was the Saudi bid not back? <laughs> I was waiting for this well, one. I was waiting for this no, 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 why was not it? Why did Liverpool why? write? Why did Liverpool write to them? Why? Well, I'm telling why, you. Right to the league. Well, we, we know why. We know why. I mean, this Liverpool is a scared. question. They were all scared. Oh, it's a load of all, scared. all these clubs were scared, not just Liverpool. And, you know, you're everyone, saying Liverpool everyone. was scared. Everyone was scared because, again, the Glazers. Well, Liverpool and another... Spurs were the ones who wrote to. The, they were the ones that have been quoted. In the but league. everyone was scared. Yeah. Everyone was scared. Everyone yeah, was they scared. were the ones we quoted. Let's throw some names out. It doesn't really matter. The fact <laughs> of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, though, that this was happening regardless. So. If we're looking at it and we're looking at the competitive thing, it's again, we knew this was coming. Well, th- those that were looking into this, those, and th- that's why this is so funny for me when I look at it, the, the outrage that's happening on Twitter. Everyone's so shocked. Everyone can't believe this. Guys, Gary Neville's having a, a fit on Sky Sports. You're like, no, 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 no. This has been a constant dialogue. These guys have been thinking about it. And again, the situation is this, this you know, any club can win the league. What happens another season? The likelihood of another Leicester winning the Premier League, how long would that take, guys? Let's realistically put that down. If we just look at probability, how realistic is it? No, it's, 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 it's tough. But the rule it out is so difficult, man. Like West Ham, even as a case in point right now, West Ham have done very, very well to even get themselves in contention. And that's what they built themselves towards. To rule it out as a, as a possibility isn't fair. And it's not... It's not how anybody builds a model of being the best in Europe. Like the, 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 the teams that you're talking about, uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, uh, AC Milan and the likes, they got into financial trouble because they've been meddling with the markets. They were building Galacticos projects, getting players for absurd amounts all over. Mm-hmm. And that, 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 you can't make everybody pay the price of them making those decisions. They want to build a stadium now, that's their own fucking problem. Arsenal had to build their own stadium a while back ago. That was their own problem, and they did well. Yeah. 
the irony behind everything you just said now, those decisions that they made built the brand equity that they were able to do, earn that money to be able to be in this situation in the first place. That's the irony about it. That, that was a marketing decision they made. And yeah. again, this is moving away from football and more that marketing. Was made more 10 years ago. It was made now in this position. It was never made like 10 years ago, this is what they're going to do. And then they're going to build their own league. The, the financial, the finan the financial okay. situation of these clubs were created in the early... Man United are in the position that they are in because they gained success at the right time when all of this was broadcast. When broadcasting began, they constantly... They were able to buy Rio Ferdinand for £30 million yeah. when no one else could afford it because they were winning the league and because as a global brand... They were, Man United, you said so yourself, Nick. Man United have been shit for how many seasons now? But yet since, they're still able to compete. 12, 2013, yeah. Ah, 100%. Exactly. But uh, I'm that. talking purely from a footballing perspective. And unfortunately, they're going to get this 300 million billion or million pounds. And those 12 teams plus the, the other three are going to become powerful. And they're not going to drop their form because they're going to have all the money players. in the world to buy whoever buy they players, want. Yeah. So, yeah. so where, where you have a situation where Man United went through a rebuilding phase, um, Arsenal had done so but they failed by the looks of it you know that's not going to be a that's not going to be a situation anymore uh i mean you you get guaranteed 300 million pounds i mean you don't or you don't even have to sell players you can just say uh, let don't players go for free nabs you want to i can see you wanted to say something what's, what's going on there i wanted to ask um uh, a question to Musa actually earlier because he was talking about um about uh, you know the 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 unfairness and 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 stuff about you know you know teams just being able to buy everyone. So PSG right and and Man City have had issues with sort of so-called financial fair play. Why did UEFA not stop it if yeah. they were so Why scared of 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 the of the financial influence? They didn't ban them at all. They never got banned. They didn't. And they should have got, got banned. About it. They should have got banned. Right. Man City should have got banned because they signed yeah. more players than what they were bringing in, and they've got the sponsorship deal with an Abu Dhabi. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, an ecosystem where where it's literally Abu Dhabi, um, co based companies that sponsor Man City. Yeah. So firstly, it's the airline, yeah. which is the airline of 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 of, of Abu Dhabi, and then they've got other yeah. related companies in Abu Dhabi that sponsor them. Yeah. Same thing is happening for yeah. PSG. Related companies from Qatar yeah. sponsor them, and that's how they that's how they that's yeah. how they pump Bayern more money Munich. into their yeah. Who owns Bayern Munich? <laughs> Where does um, the money Al come from? Adidas, <laughs> I mean, the Audi group, you know. Audi, Adidas yeah. and Audi, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Adidas and Audi. So, so. We can't be hypocritical and say that state-sponsored teams are fine, but then when when individual you know conglomerates with money come into the league and want to buy into the league, then that's not fine. Then where do you draw the line? I'm, yeah. I'm drawing the line. You know, the and then why where... why why isn't UEFA and FIFA actually doing anything about it and saying no? If you spend this much money, you're out. You know, because they never did it anything about it. No, fair. Yeah. I hear your point. But I, I think I'm drawing the line at a point where the league uh, is closed. That's that's mm. my point. That look, this this is supposed to be a competitive space where people, the best of the best, come up and show that their value is there. I I, yeah. I don't mind a team like Newcastle getting a Saudi sponsor or getting a Saudi backer to then get the best players in Newcastle to see what they can produce. I do yeah. mind Newcastle getting that and then saying everybody else must not do that. That's what I'm yeah. upset about. The biggest teams currently that you're talking about, Bayern Munich, um, Man City and the likes are in, well, not Bayern Munich, but Man City and the likes are in the, the program. And they're closing out everybody else's opportunities. And that I don't think yeah. is and, appropriate. And so and that, is, there, is, there, is there room for, is there room for a league like this to happen mm. where there is a promotion and a relegation? Where it is fair yes. for for teams to come in, and uh, a Leicester to go on and and get a top four, top two spot, yeah. and get promoted. But the problem is this league is designed in a way that teams can't get relegated. Those mm. twelve teams or fifteen teams are going to be protected and mm. pretty much run as an MLS franchise yeah. uh, or a, 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 an American model franchise. franchise. Yeah. So mm. they will always and they will never they'll never fall off their pedestal. So what warrants yeah, even you know, the uh, like and 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 Arsenal to even be considered? 
Well, no, it's the, it's the valuations. Went. It's the valuations of the clubs. It's not, not of, anything of, of, to do with of, of clubs. It's the valuation of the clubs. Yeah. It's about just, revenue. Ne- yeah. If you look at the entire list of the of the teams that that um, were these first twelve teams, all of them are number one to twelve in terms of revenue generation. All of them. Mm. The only teams that aren't yeah. that didn't sign is Bayern, PSG, and Dortmund, and they also within that top twenty list of revenue generating generation. So it's the teams that know we have the we have the players. We, we, we generate the most money and we're not getting a fair deal from, from UEFA and FIFA. So we want to start our own thing. Yeah, yeah and I think, and look, I think what, I just, one, one thing, sorry, Mosa, one thing I want to say is, yeah, you said the quality. And I think one of the arguments that they've used now as for a reason to break away is they're saying this is quality over quantity. UEFA's proposed sort of format for the Champions League is they're trying to get as many teams and try and prolong the league, make it a long sort of thing over. They're trying to extend the season with lower league teams. Now we're saying, yeah, okay, it's more competitive. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't really want to be watching those. So again, quality over quantity. And it's interesting that Nico says making money is more important than seeing great football. It's the clubs with the money that are producing the best football because, again, they're able to attract the best players. And that's the irony behind all of this. You know, so we're looking at it. I don't know if that could be held as true, man. Like, I Why not? Why is that, that not held, held as true? Explain so that. Super Bundesliga, Bayern Munich, won week in, week out, every season. Because why? They've got the best players. They can they, afford they've them. Got, they've got all the money. Yeah, all the money. Barcelona, so, now, so now you imagine, but now now you've got all these teams, whether it's a close, at this moment in time, it's closed. The reason it's closed is because these guys need to agree on something. And one of the, one of the worrying things I will agree is what Nick, Nick has pointed out. He said, obviously, the non-relegation thing for these bigger teams, that's the big issue here. But again, when you're looking at a, an American investor, they don't have relegation, so they don't want that because they can't make money off a side that gets relegated. They want, they want at the team. moment, exactly. And at the moment, football clubs balance the sheets. They balance the sheets. That's how it goes. Whereas as soon as they start doing this, they can make more money because of the brand equity of a player that they sign through the shirts that they sell currently to what they're doing now, but they've got more control over it and they've got less people taking their pie. That's how they see it. And I know it's interesting but, that we say, we, it's interesting that they say, you know, for the people, for the people, but how many people are taking their pie? You know what I mean? That's, that's the interesting thing behind all of this. How much is, ahead, ta- how much is UEFA taking? How much is UEFA taking exactly. of the pool that they should be getting, for instance? That's the question because... Um, you get you get Premier League where it's an equal distribution of, of TV rights, for instance, right? Um, so, Man United, <laughs> I I get the same as Burnley. Come on, man! Why am I getting the same money as Burnley? But, so so if I, I think it works, something, you, Nick, it's Nick, it's you asked a question yeah? earlier. <laughs> Go ahead. Nick. Oh, sorry, sorry, Nick. You asked a question earlier about is there a model that exists that can accommodate this type of model um, where where teams yeah. are making money. So if I were to suggest something, right, and say, disband Europa, uh, UEFA, right? Um, Disband UEFA as an organization, right? And then say, um, aggregate value based on on clubs, right? History, number of fans, and TV streaming rights, right? And then say, okay, we will then allocate funds. So continue basically almost having like a Champions League type of model, but... You say we will put out a, a circular to all the broadcasters worldwide. That includes Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, where you could be watching a game on YouTube yeah. and so on and so on. And say you guys globally, um, you guys will 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 auction you will auction off global licensing, right? The teams get money directly, not from UEFA who decides whatever, whatever. The teams get money directly based all the on Premier League, all the FA, how big yeah. they are, and so on and so on. And that even includes. Um, that that includes the, the other teams. And then you have a relegation system, but without all of these funny nonsense competitions like the Carabao Cup that people don't really watch. Well, the um, FA Cup, you, know, you could argue. I mean, yeah. no, that's okay. that's that's one, one cup is okay. But, but at the same time, at the same time, Sela, would you rather watch the FA Cup or the Super League between the likes? I'm just ah, saying Super to League. the mutual ah, fans. Exactly. Ah, Super League. Exactly. 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 Sorry, so as, as you go, I'd rather watch Newcastle. And, I'd rather watch Newcastle versus Sevilla. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, continue that, there. Yeah. Like, there's no need to have a hundred games a season. Right exactly. now, these players play way too much. So yeah. cut down all of yeah. these fluffy competitions. Have a, a European competition where like for like plays like for like, 
and then you know and 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 separate money accordingly according to seeding and and size of the team that i and think sure. would work and listen and i agree with you and you know i agree that. i agree i agree the richest or the richest clubs the clubs that generate the most revenue should be getting the most re- revenue if that makes sense so if there is tv mm. rights up for grabs you know i think selo you might be wrong in the sense where i don't think man united would get the same as burnley i think you get per game and i think man united will have a lot more live games in burnley so it's it is been, based yeah. on that but the yeah. model the model is still skewed and i think you're right nabs you know i think we do need to look at that from a perspective of you know the the biggest clubs oh, should be getting the most money because they uh, they 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 seen uh, or they've been seen uh, by a larger audience um, tenfold compared to say newcastle or, or burnley but performance on the pitch should determine which league you are in so yes, yes it may start true. like this but if a spurs is not doing well and a leicester is well, flying yeah. in england th- there needs to be a change here. you know you can't have changes, yeah. your yeah you can't have your place rightly solidified for however long how long is this for the next 100 years yeah. these 15 25. teams are going to be in this league you know mm. yeah. 25, 25 years of they say, Arsenal in this year again years. So I mean, for me, for me uh, there's parts of the <laughs> there's parts of the 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 model that mm. that makes sense. I think just from a footballing perspective, and obviously as a it purist, looks. you know, I just it, it hurts me to see this. Um, but I guess it is the way football is going, and unfortunately, they don't care about the fans. Unfortunately, no, they of course they don't. The They're not attached to the fans. They've bought yeah. the club and they want the club to succeed. I just want to comment on the one thing again, just going back to the, the sort of quality versus quantity there, Mosa. You spoke about the quality that's on show. And, you know, Nabs mentioned, he's just mentioned the amount of games that are being played, which, again, if we've got to dive deeper, you could argue affect the quality that we see anyway because X amount of players get injured because they overplay or, you know, they're tired so we don't see the best out of them. And the reason they're playing that many games is because of all these federations trying to get their piece of the pie. You know, and that, that's the point. If you can do that, you can narrow it, then you've, at the end of the day, you might be elevating the sort of product that we all then see. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, that's true. Can I, I ask think, you I guys think... a question quickly? Mm. Just on a side note, sorry to interrupt. Um, no worries. <laughs> there was talk about FIFA and UEFA uh, getting involved with, uh, now not the Premier League and La Liga specifically and Serie A, but the actual home association, so the FA, who actually control football in their country. So yeah. the Premier League is the, is, the, is the product in the UK. The company, yeah. Um, but FA, you know, govern football. And there's been talk that they've suggested that they could potentially ban players that are part of this rogue league um, from playing in the World Cup, for example. You know, could this see, you know, backlash from players? You know, I, on the other side of the coin, you know, you're not going to bite off the hand that feeds you. Um, because if the richer clubs are getting richer, the players are also going to get richer. So, yeah, exactly. you know, it's an interesting di- it's an interesting dynamic, you know. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne playing for Man City, but, you know, he's maybe told he's not allowed to go play in the World Cup next year. Um, yeah. mm. You know, this is, uh, this is where, you know, UEFA and FIFA could use a sort of potential ruling like this as leverage to sort of, not let this get off the ground. Um, mm. It might be a weak ploy, but it is playing with the livelihoods of players, you know, careers at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know That's what you true. guys think about that. I don't know. It's, it's been something that I've been thinking about all day. Um, and I think that's the only way they can maybe stop this league from starting because by the looks of it, they're going to start. Yeah. You know, I thought it's about this issue earlier. Mm. I thought about the legality of, of it. I don't even think you'd be able to legally do it as FIFA yeah. because FIFA yeah. FIFA is the governing body, right? How do you stop players from playing in a league? You don't govern the league. UEFA governs that league. And as long as FIFA, as long as players are using the rules of FIFA in terms of w- within the white lines and the transfer of the players legal, what is FIFA going to say about that? They can't do anything about that. You can yeah. take it to the con- Council for for Arbitration of Sport, FIFA can't even win there. You know, you can mm-hmm. take it for the European yeah. Commission, they can't win there. As long as players are playing according to FIFA rules, mm-hmm. they they the, the clubs can do can do what they want. Yeah. And countries um, and countries and countries qualify for FIFA World Cups through UEFA. Then the UEFA is the one that can then prohibit um certain yeah. players. 
Okay, been for like UEFA, South, uh, South, yeah. Sorry about yeah, that. but then, Sorry. like South American countries will, will will get in your name. You'll see you'll see who's a who's a who's a Brazilian who plays for uh, Firmino. You'll see Firmino in the World Cup because he's from South yeah. America. South America has nothing to do with this. They're okay. They're just chilling. Um, and also, if you yeah. think about it, FIFA also wanted to in, um to increase the size of the club World Cup at some point in time. You know, yeah. FIFA yeah. also wants to get more money for themselves because they want to eat up more, you know, and, and say, but, for instance, now you get four from your, um, UEFA, four from South America, four from Africa, four more from whatever, and make the club World Cup bigger than what it is so they can bring in more yeah. revenue. But, but Sela, let me ask you a question. Let me throw a spanner in the works for everyone else. So, uh, Nick, you asked about FIFA, right? Why do we have two different um, global world player of the years now? FIFA FIFA's just an organization. Yeah, two different, um, two you different know, organizations, yeah. Perez said that it doesn't matter. If FIFA doesn't want the players to play, it doesn't matter. We'll start our own World Cup. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, it's, so it's now for me, for me, you know, furthermore to this, I'm, I'm going to, you know, we speak about these governing bodies and I'm saying specific home nations. Um, so the FA, for example, in the UK. Mm. I, I'm pretty certain that the Premier League has to listen to what the FA... The FA allow this league to run. As yeah. I mean, if you if you know how the Premier League actually started, it was something very similar to this, actually, but they kept the sort of relegation and um, promotion on, on, system, yeah. and that was that was key for the, for the actual product to be implemented in the English system. But if England actually and the FA actually say to the Premier League and they maybe put a gun to their head and say these six teams are not allowed to play football in this country, um, I, I don't know legal, the, the, the legality side of things from that, that perspective because the Premier League, as we've said, they're probably not going to ban these teams because there's so much value. But the FA don't generate that value. The Premier League as a product generate that value as a company. Exactly. So, exactly. The, the, I mean, so the FA could, and, and I, I would like your views on this, could put a gun to the, the, the league's head and say, well, if they're going to do this, you know, we on UEFA's side, we on FIFA's side, um, mm you know, suspend them. Because mm-hmm. oh, what, what, are they, what are they going to lose from it? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's more so than you, likely they're going to do that. And you, and you know the Premier League, you, you vote. 14 votes um, gets a motion passed through. And obviously that's 20 minus the 6, it's 14. If they can vote on anything, then it can get passed through. Yeah, but it, it will be damaging. It will be very damaging for the Premier League. Yeah, it will. I don't, I don't see the Premier League existing without those six teams. Good luck. Good yeah. luck trying to get yeah. people to watch. Uh, uh, you know, Did you see my team? Did you see my team on the weekend? Yeah, you guys are hot. You guys are hot, guys. Come on. You guys are hot. You guys are hot. We beat we're beating top four teams, and we're gonna beat another one on the weekend. In a, in a hey, hey, they're playing they're playing tonight i mean uh, you know the irony behind all of this is it kind of throws all those premier league games into question as to qualifying for top four if they're already saying they're going to go ahead with all of this yeah. what does the game for liverpool against leeds mean for us you know it's a it's, it's an yeah. interesting i think that's the the hard thing for your purists to get the wrap their heads around especially for the guys living in the uk i think it's a difficult very difficult thing but for us who are already watching the game from from a distance and to an extent, the Premier League being so successful because of the global capacity watching the game, it's going to be an mm. interesting way to how this all plays out. We do know can legal you, documents can, are going to be flying back and yeah. forth. Yeah. Can you confirm when it's going to start? I know they said they want to start as soon as possible, but August. I'm assuming August. Is, is it this August? This August, eh? Okay. After yeah. the Euros. Yeah. Yeah, they want, to start, they want to start after the Euros. So we'll see what happens Guys, because... Because there, there's also there a thing was someone where who it, said it's a nuclear war. This isn't a civil war. It's a nuclear war in in, in, in football. <laughs> in football, but but I, yeah. I I I also hate one of the things they're talking about the fact that they could they could, you know, do a thing where they could have Manchester United versus Real Madrid happening in New York. New York you know what I mean? Yeah. In the yeah. in the European Super League, or then there's that matches in, in Sing- matches in Singapore, matches you know, and but that's wherever. but Kutla, that's gonna, that's, that's consequential. That. That's gonna happen yeah. though, because let's if we that. go back a couple of seasons, I think it's three seasons ago, four seasons ago, they were already experimenting with that. International yeah, that inter mm. inter yeah intercontinental preseason Champions cup, cup. And that's, yeah, so, so and that was guy, one way for so, them to so look for the guy who's who actually the guy who actually who who's behind that he's involved in this, eh? 
Well, of course, he's he's, yeah, he's yeah. involved in this because he's the one who who he's also uh, quite influential in 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 the MLS and how the MLS started and everything like that. <coughs> and he came with the came up with the idea as well to come to them and say, guys, let's do this. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah. So it's it's it's, it's definitely something I hate. <coughs> unless unless obviously they can be they can be to to Joburg, Soccer City, you know, Manchester United versus um Real Madrid. I'm buying the ticket. <laughs> exactly, and I think that's something that's going to happen. But we've we've got a good question here for from uh, Christy Nabs. She says, yeah. "Can we chat about what happens to broadcast sponsorship deals, especially those that are in contractual agreements already? Does this open up space for Facebook and Twitch, the non-traditional ways of watching football?" Yes, definitely. And I mentioned it earlier on. Um, your current deals, right, are with are signed with with UEFA. But if the teams go away and they sign and they set up their own league, those deals that they have with UEFA are, are, are gone. Um, because essentially, if UEFA then says we're going to expel you, then you're long, no you're longer a member of UEFA. Um, and you can then have discussions with anyone that you want. Um, and I think it would definitely, and especially the Twitch conversation. Um, I was going to mention this because I did some research a while ago on, on Gen Z and, and how they consume yep. content. Yeah. Football needs to catch a wake up, guys. The way yep. that we that football is now, and the way that it's going to go to in the next 10, 15 years, it'll be indescribable. I spoke a while ago about I don't know if you guys have seen a movie. I forgot the name of the film where these guys walking around with vir- they go into a virtual reality booth. They don't leave the house or whatever. It's a virtual reality booth, and they go through a world of virtual reality. I don't see, I don't see, I can see that thing happening in twenty in fifteen years time. They've already football been experimenting with, with it. People watching, yeah. It's, there, it's, there's already concepts saying, yeah, the guys have already tried. They've built VR, VR, uh, VR sets, sorry, where you can be in yeah. the home of your own seat and you're in the stadium experiencing. In Obviously, the stadium, yeah. there's no substitute for the real thing based on our opinion, yeah. but Gen Z won't know any different because they're already they talking to each other across the world like this, yeah. They, yeah. And tradition. Yeah. That's, we, that's we, how they consume content, yeah. And all of us, we're speaking from a traditional perspective because we're still on the cusp of that fine... We, the millennials in terms of, we've got to experience both worlds. We are experienced. We've experienced the past and we know we, we've been part of the sort of progression of technology. Gen Z only know what they're currently consuming. And I yeah. think like maybe, yeah. maybe the next sort of question would be getting a couple of those guys on, getting their feedback, their opinions. And also like, yeah, a, yeah I, I mean, that's, that's a valid, valid we need point. To, we, need to, we need to just have to um, not say any cuss words, you know, their moms, their dads, you know, because, you know, Gen Z. Oh, uh, please, Gen Z are already doing that <laughs> behind their parents' backs. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I've had, a, I've, I've had a recent conversation with a, with a chairman of a football club in South Africa, right? And I was speaking to him about, okay, so what do you do to, to bring on fans who are much younger than your traditional fans now? Oh. What do you do? I, I mean, do you guys oh, have a Snapchat account? Do you guys have oh, yeah. an Instagram account? You know, what is your strategy there? Because yeah. r- right now we, we're, we're having, we're seeing a lot of fans disappearing from, from football stadiums, even after COVID. I can guarantee you now. Well, PSL don't you know, have it already <laughs> because of broadcasting, yeah. which is the irony behind all of this. Yeah, sorry. It's been COVID, it's been COVID for a long time in the PSL stadiums. But, but, but it's, yeah, super sport, exactly. it's, super, it's super sport bro- broadcasting rights that took the fans away from the stadiums because exactly why, why should I travel from my home all the way to Soweto to Soccer City to go watch Chiefs play when I can just watch the game here at home. And But now fast know, forward that, Silo. Now fast forward that. This is now affecting those guys who took the fans from the stadium. Now it's affecting the broadcasters where the clubs can get the autonomy if if needs be. I'm curious though, Nabs, what was the response to the to the man yes. you're talking to from the club? The, uh, the, the, the chairman I was talking to is the Swallows chairman, David Mahashwa. Um, and he was he said to me, listen, we we have to get it right, which is why if you go on Twitter now, he's probably the most engaged chairman. He will have a discussion with anyone. Um, but he he's he understands the fact that he's not the target market of football in ten years' time. Um, mm. And he understands. But his issue is that um, the whole league has to catch a wake up, uh, you know. And there's teams yeah. like Cape Town City who I think are doing it um, in terms of understanding you know the the the, the future of, yeah. of football but in general he understand he agrees they're not doing it right now which maybe no. i should start a company to do that for them but <laughs> you should you know they, they they do understand that the the future of football isn't isn't you know with bums and seats so much as 
people on you know watching on TV or on streaming platforms or on mobile phones. And you know, you mentioned Cape Town City is an interesting point because one of the reasons why, obviously, I think it's Kamitos or something, the, the Greek guy who was with Ajax, yeah. and he had a four, yeah, and he had a he had a fallout. But their sort of whole incentive at the end of the day, there's a reason why they called the Cape Town City, and that was to form part of the My City Group, another incredible sort yeah. of innovation coming from Man City Man as to yeah. growing their brand equity and their business model. So we talk about all these facets that are built in. This this hasn't been this isn't an overnight decision. Again, if you were paying attention, these were noises that were whilst mentioned. Um, but yeah, from that perspective, yeah, it makes a valid point. And again, PSL is so reliant on Supersport. Supersport is so reliant on external sponsors. So again, what happens to Supersport when the Super League dro- like signs up? Well, what happens? Where do they go? If they, if say the Super League do choose to go digital, all of us can log on to Twitch or YouTube or whatever it is to yeah. watch it. What happens we'll to Supersport? Watch, we'll to Supersport. Supersport. Super hey, guys need to catch, like you said, guys need to catch a wake up. Yeah. Um, yeah gentlemen. Fun. Final thoughts before we go. I want to know, guys, are you guys, uh, it sounds like a lot of you guys are pro ESL at this point. Would you guys speak <laughs> anything <laughs> from this discussion? Listen, we just said, Mosa, we said Mosa, sporting I'll merits. slide into your DMs, bro. I'll slide <laughs> into your DMs. Because, because it sounds like you guys are very pro, pro the, the, the technology and the, the adaptation that this will be enjoyed by the Gen Z. But you, I don't hear a lot of discussions about the other generations that have been watching football in this traditional base and have no. been supporting football in this traditional base. No, I, and I, I, yeah, no, Musa, yeah. From my side, from my side, Musa, it's 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 a whole thing of you know we we have disruptors in, in in every industry, right? And this is the disruption that wants to come into football right now, obviously. But sporting merit, I think, for all of us on on on, on here, I think it's something that we hold. Um, in high regard, and I feel that that is where we want. If anything um, is to change, there has to be sporting merit linked to it. If there's no sporting merit linked to it, then I feel that you know you can't really um, that that league doesn't really have credibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, to 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 what we know. You know what I mean? Because if you think about it, right, the European European Cup from what it was to become Champions League also changed. You know, European Cup used, used to be the the winner of each league participating in a tournament, right? And then what they did was they expanded that and obviously then there was this whole coefficient stuff, four, le- four teams from each league type of thing. So even that changed, you know what I mean, from yeah. back in the day, you know what I mean? You know, because it was just Real Madrid versus uh, Liverpool. You know, Man United couldn't even try win because obviously Liverpool was the champions or whatever. But that moved, right? And we got to where we are now and now we're trying to move again forward somehow but we need Sporting Mayor to still be the one that carries yes. you along the way. Agreed. So, like, like sorry, ASL sorry, what's up? More incorporation of uh, sporting merit in its um, approach. I just want sporting merit. If if, it's, if it has sporting merit, I'm on with it. I just I just want to answer your question based, and this is the irony. I'm going to answer a European Super League question based on how the PSL are currently run. You you talk about you know, what happens with the existing sort of fans there. Now, let's think about the business model of football clubs traditionally. One of the key factors for them, match day attendance, right? The huge chunk of revenue. And these sort of guys, that's where they spend their money. They earn their money so they can spend that. PSL, we know the football, the, the football clubs, that's not how they make their money. They don't make their money by filling in stands. They make their money from broadcasting and sponsors. And that's kind yeah. of eventually where this is all going. And again, we I know we've spoken about this, but that kind of leaves that gap. Now, it doesn't really provide them with a solution in a sense that they either need to jump on board or they get left behind. And that's just the reality of the matter because broadcasting now is accessible on via cell phone. And that's that's yeah. the reality of the situation. And to Sillow's point, to Nabs's point, and the innovation and everything else, how we are as, as humans, you've got to adapt or nothing. And I, like for the purists, this is a tough thing to digest. Final, yeah, final thoughts. See, yeah. I can't see a lot of teams being able to adapt to this, and that's a problem from my side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, just true. on a on a side note, um, there was something I read quite f- uh, that was quite funny earlier, because obviously Man United are going to be expelled from the Premier League. That means ninety five, ninety six champions are now Newcastle United. Deliver us a trophy, mate. Deliver us a trophy. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. Look at you getting a trophy. Big <laughs> door. <laughs> yes, it still takes a long time for you guys to. <laughs> All right, Silo, Nabs, final thoughts? 
No, I, 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 as I said, man, I, I just want Sporting Merit to be attached to anything that I watch uh, in football. Uh, I think, um, yeah, the sport that I love the most is football. And uh, if there's Sporting Merit attached to it, um, and I think then I can I can think about it and say, okay, maybe this is something that I must just accept. Uh, but in the current format that they've proposed in terms of these 15 teams not being able to be relegated, I'm not for it. Um, they need to go back to the drawing board and come back with something else. Um, because I think, yeah, I think that's that's the one part where people are asking themselves, how did they get to that? Um, and, and, and as you can see with this new Champions League as well, um, they, they seemingly... Um, you know, there's sporting merit attached, but also there is that um, thing of prestigious teams still being um, qualifying for Champions League, no matter, no matter, um, you know, like if Man United doesn't, you know, qualify and come sixth, they can still qualify for Champions League in this new format that they're proposing um, from the video that you sent, Musa. Um, but yeah, sporting merit or, or, or nothing. Yeah, yeah. And I'd have to agree on my side. Um, um, I'm still a purist football fan. Um, I still like to watch, you know, teams competing. Um, and if you if you play crap, you must be out, you know. And and that's what I think. But I'm not um, I'm not naive to the fact that football will will change fundamentally um, in my lifetime, probably in the next five years. And with that in mind, I think that football has to prepare itself for a, a new future. And I think fans have to prepare themselves to understand that they, they are no longer the target market. Um, us who, who were born in the 80s and, and stuff like that, or 90s or whatever, we're, not, we're no longer the target market. People, football is, has way surpassed where we are. Um, I, I would like for them to, to adapt the model to include uh, a relegation and also include payments to, to lower leagues so that they can also continue to be competitive. Yeah. Yeah, valid points. And on that note, gentlemen, I just want to thank everyone who came out and watched. We had a good turnout from Linda, Niku, Pumalani, Keenan, some of the usual suspects, as well as we had someone Louis, today. Hey, just, Louis. Just, uh, just, uh, just say hi to Louis there. That's my, co- that's my colleague there, you know, at least, you know, uh, get the my guys colleague. from work to, to tune in. <laughs> sure, Louis, thank you very much. And anyone else that I might have missed, thank you guys. Um, that pretty much wraps up the first episode of the F of the Press Show. <laughs> So, <laughs> the That's what it's called, apparently. Have a good evening, everybody. Enjoy the football. And for all the Liverpool fans uh, that are still watching football, try and enjoy the Leeds games tonight. All right, cheers. <laughs> cheers.